Welcome to ILC Tech Talk. In this episode, we're going to be discussing uploading and downloading programming to our Light Leader panel using a laptop computer and the Light Leader Pro software that you can download off of our website. Once you've done that and installed it on your computer, now you will need a USB cable to connect to your standard Light Leader panel. All of these panels are going to come with at least a USB connection. Now, right up here at the top, I'm just going to plug in my USB cable and then I'm going to plug it in here into one of my USB jacks. Many of these panels will also come with a TCP IP cable that you can use for the same type of connection. Um, but we're just going to use the USB cable to keep it as simple as possible for now. So on the software here, uh, you'll see down at the bottom it says file name none, which means it doesn't have a file that it's referring to to upload and download from the panel. Up in the upper left corner, you'll see file, just your standard Windows pull downs. And you'll go down here and I'm going to do a file save as. I'm going to create a file and I'm going to call it demo-1 and then hit save. Now that I've done that, now that's the file that's open is demo1.ll for light leader. If I connect to my panel, now I know that my COM port is COM port 3 on this laptop that I'm connecting to uh, the panel with. And I, but I'm going to con connect to the panel and the first thing I see is this display window comes up and it's going to show me the time and the size of the relay panel and a few other things. So I can set the clock in the panel using the Windows clock on my computer. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm looking here, I've got send settings to light leader panel, download. Uh, I'm looking to upload settings from the panel first because I've already hand programmed a number of switches and some control functions. So I'm going to get settings from Light Leader Panel. I'm going to click on the upload button. Now I'm going to get a, a little uh, window here that's going to say discard all host changes. And I'm going to say yes because I'm bringing in from the panel everything that's there into the software rather than starting from fresh. And as you see, it's going to upload blocks of, so of data. There's like 2,045 blocks of data it has to run through um, in a single panel. So while it's uploading all that data from the panel, it's going to go and ask every single possible question of all the possible switch inputs and connections. It's going to load up all that information, um, and even if it's blank information, it's going to compile that into the software as that configuration for this panel. Now, if you had multiple panels connected together and you were going through an advanced network controller or a basic network controller, it would go through the network controller and it would bring all that information in from each panel and compile it all together into one program. Let's see how we're doing. We have a message now that says upload complete. So now we could go in here and we could check to see if some of that information is there. I know that I have I'm under my switch inputs. I can go to configure inputs and I can see I have my four input card is there. And under address two, light sync device, I had a two button switch station. Button one was a push button on and button two is a push button off. If I go to my LightSync device 03, that was a six button station. So I could go here and cursor down through my six switches and see that they're all push button toggles on off, controlling the six different relays. I can go to my device four and I have that as a photo cell. I had set for a two second filter because I was doing some testing. Um, normally you would change this to a 30 second filter and I can do that right now. So now that I've made that change, I'm going to go File, Save, and I'm going to, it's going to ask me what do I want to save it as, and so I'm going to save it as that same Demo 1 program that we started from. Since it's a change now to it, it wants to know do you want to call it a new one or not, and it says Demo already exists, do you want to replace it? Yes, we just made a simple change to it, that way it, it knows that we're wanting to step on it. Uh, otherwise, you can save multiple versions of the same software this way and have different aspects of the changes you've done so you can go back and forth and test things as you go. Now, once we've done that, we've made a change. So we're going to go back to connect again here. And now I'm going to do uh, download settings to the Light Leader panel. Now that we've made a change, it's a simple change, but still, it is a change. The panel doesn't know it yet. So we go back to our menu here. We go to connect. 
and we'll use the send settings to light leader panel download uh, button and it'll ask us do you want to continue it does give you a chance to oh no that's not what I wanted to do and you could cancel out of it um, you can change the password here if you want to um, if we leave it all zeros it's not going to ask you for a password every time you do this so we're going to hit continue and it's now going to start downloading those blocks of data to the light leader panel and then the memory banks there it is now it's done so that verification message is also a checksum message. So it lets us know that the information that was sent from the computer to the panel and back and forth is the same information. They've verified back and forth that they've got, they've got what they sent and it's the same on both ends. Otherwise, you'd get some type of an error message about lost communications, um, data packet not complete, things like that. And if you get those kinds of messages, give us a call at our 800 number and talk, ask for tech support and we can help you through those things. Um, you can also do the same type of operation using a TCP IP port and you can go to the TCP IP port on your panel if the panel has one. A lot of standalone panels don't have an IP port unless it's requested for the job type. Um, if you have a network of systems or a network panel, typically the, uh, the master panel in a network will have a TCP IP port because on larger systems like that, it's expected that the customer is going to load this software on their computer system and they're going to connect to it and make timer changes and things like that after you're gone and you're done with the job. 